how are you doing? My name is Carlos and I work with the Nevada Division of Water Resources and I'm really happy to be here with you today. So we have something fantastic for you and it is our floodplain model which we drag all over this great state and show people like you a lot of these different functions that we have within our river systems and how important they are in regards to flooding. And what we love to start off talking about is what we call our wetlands and these areas are always located next to rivers, next to ponds, streams, um, and big bodies of water, and essentially they act as sponges. Uh, also, these areas happen to have the biggest biodiversity that you can find in Nevada in terms of fish, wildlife, all the plants that are there. Really amazing, amazing uh, locations. But they do something else which is very important for our whole town here. Now, just like a lot of towns in northern Nevada, you'll see that a river runs through it, and that's very similar to the Carson River running through the Carson Valley and all the towns located alongside the Carson River. Uh, Reno, which is located next to the Truckee River, and of course, uh, Elko, which is right next to the Humboldt River. And all of these important towns are next to river systems, but what we'd love to just start off to discuss is uh, these wetlands. And again, what uh, happens is when we have these really big torrential rains, maybe a few times per year, uh, the important functions that these wetlands do is while that rain is coming down, it does happen to slow down the river water. It soaks up, soaks up a lot of that rainwater, and while this water is running through our town, uh, it's essentially not flooding, and that's a really important thing. Now, one thing that we're going to focus on, uh, this area that's closest to the river and at a very low elevation relative to our, the rest of our town, these are called our floodplains under really big extreme heavy rains. These happen to have the highest potential for flooding, but as you can see, most of our town is pretty safe. But I do say because we happen to live in Nevada and there's quite a bit of development taking place, a lot of times these wetlands are under some sort of danger. And a lot of times what would happen is if somebody decided to develop over these areas that are really important for our entire watershed system, we'll just take a look at what might happen. So, I'll bring in uh, a really big shopping center, and of course, just like any big shopping center or entire housing development, what changes a lot is right there on the ground, what's beneath your feet, and no longer do you have any area for that water to trickle into anything to hold that water back. So the next time we have one of these great, great big heavy rain systems moving through and we get a whole bunch of that rain, just the same amount that we've had before, you'll see a big change down in our river system. And these lower elevation areas did flood, but we also happen to see some flooding in these upper areas where we didn't happen to see any of that um, type of flooding before. And that's quite a bit typical of um, some of these changes where we change the whole dynamic in which way the water flows from our upstream areas and the downstream areas are often a time, often time affected. But because of the fact that we have seen this for many generations, uh, a lot of times one of our, uh, some of our really smart city planners uh, some of our developers, they basically get together and try to figure out ways to minimize the types of flooding that occur when you add in a whole lot of asphalt, a lot of concrete. And uh, I'll just go ahead and say it, you know, we all live in homes, we all like to go to shopping centers, they're really a part of our uh, everyday life. And while we do happen to love our wetlands, a lot of times when we do see these, one, thing is that one of the things that we can really work to try to implement are these detention ponds, retention basins, and one of the fantastic things that they do is they work alongside the rest of our cities and towns, and a lot of times they're sloped so that water will drain into these. Sometimes you'll be next to a Walmart, and you'll see one of these big 
maybe dry bowls next to it. And a lot of times what's happening is whenever we get rains, water diverts into these. And sometimes in housing developments, you might see two or three detention ponds just like that. And they are never really activated until we get these big heavy storms. And I'll show you just what that looks like. So, same type of storm as we had before. But, one of the really important things that they do is they fill up with water, but they send that water back into the river in a very slow manner. In fact, these will take days and days and days to empty back out into the river, which is really great. So if you consider our whole entire town here and getting a lot of rain, our river system is very heavy from all of the water that's coming up from the mountains, uh, all the neighboring areas, all the storm drains in our system are all sending water back into this river. So the river is quite heavy with water. And anytime we have these located throughout our towns that can slow down the amount of water getting into our river, that's a great thing. It's a great thing for all of the homes beside the river, which uh, may be in danger of flooding. All right, and uh, with that, I want to say thank you very, very much for joining us today, and I really hope you enjoyed this presentation. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Thanks again.